Mm -hmm. uh, one of the issues that you, you, you spoke about is a visit by a Russian official to Zimbabwe. And uh, we want to find out his purpose of uh, the visit to Zimbabwe. Well, the, the visit is about to happen, you know. Uh, it's a, she's a senior, it's a she, she's a oh. senior official. So yeah. she's coming to Zimbabwe in the context of the very strong historical uh, links between Zimbabwe, you know, pre-independence. We worked very well with uh, the former Soviet Union, of which the core was Russia. A lot of our generals now, they've started their military careers in the former Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. So we do have strong historical bonds. They stood with us post-independence. You know, we would have been the victim of uh, Iraqi-style aggression in 2008. But Russia vetoed because it is a member of the Security Council. So it's obviously a very important country. And we also have since developed uh, strong economic and business relations. They are investing in this country. So uh, then uh, finally, of course, there's the issue of peace between them and, and Ukraine. Uh, which uh, you know we hope uh, can be re-established so that uh, these important countries, both of them uh, players in the food chain of the world, they can come back into a normal relationship and uh, things can move forward. Mm -hmm. well, uh, speaking of uh, the crisis in Ukraine, what is uh, the position of uh, the party? Uh, we have seen other countries supporting one over the other. Uh, are you taking a position uh, as, a, as a party? No, the African position is we want to be neutral into the conflict. We obviously believe that the principles of the United Nations should be respected, but we also believe that it is important that security is not divisive. You know, so this quest for security is not divisive, and here we condemn NATO for provoking a situation where there is now conflict between Russia and Ukraine. NATO is an, you know, is an expansionist bloc, and that is at the heart of the problem. They've created a strong sense of insecurity on the part of uh, the Russian Federation, and uh, it is uh, this, this is an important nuclear power. We, 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 they deserve the, the, the respect which they should in international diplomacy. And as a, as a core member of the United Nations in Security Council, it is important that they are not treated like a, a, a third-rate country. And uh, we hope that the Americans will not abuse their superpower status to continue to, uh, to, uh, to play the prospect of provoking a war, a, nu a thermonuclear war which will destroy mankind. Mm -hmm. Because that's what uh, the confrontation between Washington and, and Moscow would result in. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other issue that you, you spoke about uh, is with regards to the agreement signed uh, with uh, the European Investment Bank as a country that uh, we, we're signing those agreements, which are an indicator of uh, uh, positives in our economy. Now, uh, what are the agreements uh, about, the agreements that have been signed so far? I'm not privy to the details, but they've been to the banking institutions. I think one of them is First Capital. I think the other one is probably NMB. These are major commercial banks in Zimbabwe. They are also involved in investment in investments in Zimbabwe. And we have the European Investment Bank uh, put its money in Zimbabwe so that the private sector of Zimbabwe, which is doing very well under the Second Republic, is open for business. It is canvassing domestic resources, domestic investment, as much as it is seeking out foreign direct investment. So uh, it is a good thing to have the, 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 the funding institution of the 27 member block of the EU, the largest trading block in the world, and the largest source of investment capital in the world, to come back to Zimbabwe. It means that our policies of re-engagement are succeeding. The Second Republic of President Idim Nangagwa is doing very well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, we, we know that uh, the, the, the forecasts are that uh, the economy is going to grow by a plus 5% uh, this year. Um, but we've seen a problem, a problem child, which is uh, the currency and uh, the exchange rate uh, in, in the country. And uh, you, you indicate that the, the, there are some errant banks that uh, uh, have been uh, behind or causing this. 
uh, what would you want to see happen to such banks as a, as a party, as the ruling party yourself? Well, that uh, the, the the regulation of the of, of the banks belongs to the statutory regular belongs to the the statutory regulation of bank, the banks belongs to the seven the seven it, yeah. of the Reserve Bank Governor of Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. We don't want to go ahead of him. But as a party, we would want he, the, the, him and the other governing authorities to make sure that the regulatory framework of the banks and other pertinent financial institutions is sound and it is adhered to, and that errant speculative behavior you know, to attack our currency is not countenanced, and the culprits are brought to book. So that you know, you know, currents don't lose value when it is in the pockets of the of, of the citizens. You know, the thing which defines the relation between citizens is currency more than any other. Yeah. So it is important that we restore a st stability in our monetary in our monetary system. Uh, there is no reason why a country which is earning so much we are earning twice now more than we were doing three years ago in terms of foreign currency earnings. And we earn more than most of the other countries, including Kenya, which have a larger population. So it begs the question, why are we not having a stable currency? Mm. So there are bad apples in the financial system, which needs to be thumped. And uh, uh, I think the president is right on, on, on it. He spears the veil of the stock exchange, where there was abuse of a derivative to drive uh, the devaluation of our currency in competition to the auction market of the Reserve Bank. Now, under the statute of Zimbabwe, under the constitution of Zimbabwe, the only institution which should print money, whether it be digital money or electronic money or whatever, is the Reserve Bank. Anybody else who is dabbling into that is breaking the law, and they need to, uh, to face the wrath of the law. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is that applies to the stock exchange. Yeah. That also ap ap applies to the mobile money markets. Before that, maybe this has been husbanded now, but uh, the stock exchange has been the source of abuse. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the issues that you touch on um, comes from some of the stories that we've been reading in um, uh, the media. Uh, with regards to uh, contestation within the party, that, uh, there, that there are some people who are afraid of contesting some uh, uh, positions. And uh, we want to go back a little bit to the time of uh, former President Mugabe, that uh, uh, there were issues around succession, to say that the, the party does not have a clear succession plan. And it seems that it still is the, the case now. We want you to, to clarify to us, do you think that this could be the reason why we are seeing such stories no. in the media? No, no, no. The party has a very clear succession plan and it doesn't arise at this moment. Mm -hmm. The succession plan. I mean, so succession plan. It doesn't arise at the moment because we have a candidate who is the president of Nangagwa for the elections in 2023. He's constitutionally due for another term of office, and the party feels that in four years is the, is the restoration of, 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 of uh, the legacy of the revolution. He's done a fantastic job. You know, so why would you, anybody want to? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. He's doing a good job. So that is the view of the membership of the party. And within the party, there is an agreement that is the sole candidate. And we're going to have an elective Congress come October. Already the organ of the party, one, the Congress, the youth have endorsed him. Mm -hmm. uh, they were similarly, we are hearing the same from the provinces of the Women's League, which is going to have an elective Congress. That's another organ of the party. So we have no issues about uh, a succession path because it is very clear that it is, it is not an, a, 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 a arising in this issue. We have a candidate and he's doing a good job and it's President Idim Nangaku. Mm -hmm. uh, one of uh, the, the last questions that I'm going to ask you, uh, you say that uh, ZANU-PF is a party that has a history of discipline and uh, that we, we hear and see other members uh, saying things that uh, uh, are not in sync with uh, ZANU-PF and say there's need for uh, members to caucus before they go out there and say things. Now, uh, what w is uh, the party going to do about such members who are speaking in tangent with uh, the position of the party? Well, as, as a spokesman of the party, I frown upon that kind of behavior. 
Uh, I found upon it very strong because uh, I want to speak, when I come to speak here, I want to speak about a consensual opposition of the party. So to have uh, discordant voices coming from wherever and whenever, it's not a good thing. We call up upon them as good party members, as good cadres of the party to abide by the constitution come and discuss issues within the ambit of ZANU-PF. We thresh out a common position, and if yours win, we follow it. If it doesn't win, you, you concur. Mm -hmm. That's how ZANU-PF has been. That's why the party has managed to survive for more than 60 years. Now we are with six decades of survival as a party, more than that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have uh, low faced many challenges before, and we have survived to have uh, an institutional capacity to deal with all the, 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 the discordant voices, you know, through the party mechanisms, through the party co constitution, through the party organs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, let, uh, let, let people should not speak out of 10. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the last one is uh, with regards to uh, developments in uh, Zambia, uh, where we have seen that uh, uh, there is an establishment of uh, AFRICOM there. And uh, we want to find out, th this has never been the case in SEDIC. Uh, no, no, it has been, there's been some kind of presence in Botswana. In Botswana, yes. Yeah, yes. so Botswana seems now to be deciding that it's not, it wants to come back to the fold. Mm -hmm. And the Americans are now trying to use Zambia as a fallback position. You know, mm -hmm. we, we work in the framework of SADC. We have uh, a framework which comes from our common struggle against apartheid and yeah. racism and colonialism and we also would like of course every every country is sovereign within SADC but we cooperate mm. we have a regional power which is South Africa yeah. you know you know it would be proper if Washington would probably consult with Pretoria first mm -hmm. before they think of putting a base in the region we don't want a, another Ukraine way you have a small country near a big neighbor being coerced or enticed to host hostile weapon against a neighbor and then it results in the war. That's not right. This is it's not exactly the same, but it's it's, it's following the same logic. Mm -hmm. You know, it would be better for Washington that if it is seeking for collective security globally, it does not uh, go against the tenets of the, the local players. Mm -hmm. And in this instance, uh, South Africa we fought hard for them to be free, mm -hmm. as a, to become a member of African Union. Uh, they're the most important economy on the continent. Uh, it's really proper that Washington should have due deference, even to Pretoria, let alone to SADC, mm -hmm. before they start thinking of uh, putting bases in the region. In the region. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, um, we have uh, read and seen that uh, the, the sentiment across the region is uh, that uh, leaders are frowning upon uh, the establishment of such in, in, uh, in Zambia. And uh, what uh, I would want to find out is uh, what do you think are the, the dangers and consequences of having such a base in, in SADC? Well, we don't want, to, this is an for initial foreign affairs, uh, you can't discuss yeah. diplomacy in the open arena, but obviously I've mentioned it before, we, yeah. are, we, we share common history, this is the country of the great Kaunda, a great Pan-Africanist and a great uh, a progressive member and a founder member of the Africa Union. We have uh, the African Security Council now in Addis Ababa. Yeah. Uh, Security Council, which uh, um, will normally be issue the, the first port of reference for issues of African security, even at national level. Mm -hmm. I would have hoped that, besides my earlier remarks about South Africa as a regional power, Zambians could also consult with the other members, in, you know, in, in Addis Ababa, so that uh, we do not have a divided position of Africa in terms of the quest for collective security mm -hmm. amongst ourselves. Thank you so much, General Mumchango, for your okay. time. Thank you so much. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right. Hey, let me let me remove this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I, I see, Bob. <laughs>